talent. Hey, here we go now. Sorry, but I came up to a hill, I didn't have time to adjust the camera and put my glove on. Okay, so I'm here at Bullock's Rest, so I thought what I'd do is have a banana. <laughs> Just uh, kind of like uh, get a bit of energy after my ride. I've done about 10k to get here. And I thought what I would do before I show the camera, excuse me. I thought what I would do before I actually show you the new Sony ZV E10, which is the successor to the Sony ZV1 or ZV1, they call it in America. Uh, so I, th I thought what I would do, I would actually, sh I would actually do some filming with it first, and I'm actually doing that as we speak. What you are seeing right now is from the lens of the Sony ZV E10 and what you're hearing is the audio through the onboard microphone which is not the best place to film if you are uh, a serious content creator or, or videographer and you want to get a decent sound but uh, it is do, it is acceptable it has three recording points on top uh, and it has actually got a um, it's got a, a dead cat a wind muff which it really needs so you're probably picking up a few clicks from uh, the gadget I'm using to hold this thing let me give you some video first I'm still learning how to work this camera, so please forgive me for some of my dodgy footage. Um, now, I, I am starting to think that some of you are thinking, my goodness, how amazing is the inner body stabilization in this camera? I've just got to get the Sony ZV E10. I've just got to get it. Well, you know, it's not. <laughs> but I knew that before I bought the camera. The reason why the stabilization is so good in this camera is because I'm using the Fayutech G6 Max because the camera stabilization is not that good. But I knew that before I bought it. And, you know, serious content creators have got their cameras on tripods anyway. But if you want to get out and do some active motion stuff, which, which is what I like to do, uh, I use my GoPro for heavy duty stuff as I did on my ride this morning. But for stuff like this, you know, uh, where I want to vlog and what have you, I will use a, a gimbal so I won't worry about the stabilization in the camera, which is not that good. You can do stuff in post, and so, uh, but you know, you're still gonna have to crop the camera to do it. So, let me tell you a little bit more about this. Now, I, I just pressed the uh, I think the background, the blue, uh, <laughs> the background blur button so it's quite likely that hopefully the background is being blurred I hope so I haven't touched the content mode creator mode I know that if you if you press a button on this thing and you, you content creation you can sort of put your product in front of the camera and we'll do it with this with the light here and it will actually focus on the product but I don't I don't think I've got that turned on I haven't learned how to use this thing yet so let me tell you why I bought this camera. 
I bought it for this very reason. Do you know there's a lot of reviews online about this camera at the moment and so you can go out there and find out about all the specs. It's an APS-C camera. It's not full frame, it's a cropped sensor, but it's a good sensor, good size sensor and it's good in low light and so uh, I don't have a problem with, with it being a crop sensor but it's it takes it's an e-mount lens and it takes interchangeable lenses and I've got other sunny lenses and I intend to get some good lenses uh, look at this look at let me just show you this One of the things I want to do with the camera is I want to film and I want to vlog and I want to do it outdoors. I want to do it climbing mountains. I want to do it hiking, riding on a bike. I just want to do it living an adventure, not just trapped in a studio. Uh, you know, I'll do a bit of that as well and I can do green screen stuff and everything and that's fun. And I'm, I have a full framed a mirrorless camera and uh, it's, it's amazing. It takes fabulous photos like this though. It's 24 megapixel except it's full frame whereas this is an APS-C crop sensor but my full frame camera is large I have a large lens that I put on it it's an all-round thing it does amazing stuff and I love it but when I was hiking across England uh, uh, it was in my backpack it was too big to be hanging around my neck or, or or you know hooked to something on my belt with the risk of bumping into a fence or a stile that you're climbing over and damaging the camera I mean I dropped the camera the other day trying to do something smart and so it's big it's got weight to it I wanted some Something that I could fit in a pocket that I could maybe in my cargo pants you know when I'm hiking or what have you and I just want to be able to grab a camera quickly and take it out I just want something that I can use quickly uh, in the moment when there's an opportunity to take an awesome shot and, and I found when I was walking across England uh, on the uh, on Wainwright's uh, famous coast-to-coast -coast walk I found that while I was doing that I had like something like 30 34 kilometers to walk every day and and when I saw an amazing shot I would have to stop take off my backpack and take out my camera sometimes unpack the backpack because things have moved around to get to the camera <laughs> and uh, you know and, and and get the camera set up and take the shots that I wanted and uh, it, you know, it, was, it was an absolute pain to do that and I, and I found that I missed some shots I mean I used my smartphone because uh, you know it's just more convenient and so of course it's a really really small sensor and it wouldn't take a good photo and it was the best I could do at the time let's get rid of the background blur it's off I think that's better for, for where I am yeah so so I wanted a camera that was small and, and if need be if I wanted to put a bigger lens on to get a better shot that I could carry the lens in another compartment on my backpack and I could get to it easily uh, or I could have a mini tripod and set it up so speed is of the essence for me particularly when I'm out walking and hiking and what have you so I wanted a camera that would move with me I wanted a camera that, that I could use wherever I was and whatever I was doing and so I was looking at you know the Osmo Pocket 2 and uh, you know, and I probably will buy that because it's small, it's effective, and there's a few other cameras I'll buy. But I wanted a good camera that I could grab quickly and that I could use to vlog with as well as take photographs. And I think this is the camera of my dreams that works for me. So I hope you like it. I recommend it. It's not perfect. They tell me it's got a problem with rolling shutter. I like that's the jello effect, you know, where, where the background starts to kind of like do that kind of thing that's it rolling shutter there you are uh, but you know a lot of cameras have that a lot of APS cameras have rolling shutter and they reckon you can get around that by doing some stuff with the with the frame rate and what have you increasing that and so but I'm not too worried about it because if I'm doing some motion stuff I'm doing some let's do some motion stuff right now I don't know how it'll work
No, that's called Inception Mode. It's just a bit of fun in it. But uh, So, I mean, I can do background blur. I can do fun things if I want. So, it's a great camera. It answers my needs. It's, my, it's the thing that I've been looking for. And I'm happy with it, with its flaws, with its faults. It's not perfect, but I think for what I want, it's ideal. And it does 4K video and what have you, slow-mo, whatever you like, background blur, product, you know, reveal, all that sort of stuff. And so, I, I encourage you to check out the Sony ZV E10 or ZV E10 depends where you are. Um, I bought mine uh, from JB Hi-Fi. I saw it online cheaper for $150 cheaper than Sony was selling it and I went to JB Hi-Fi. They didn't hesitate to give it me for that price so I pre-ordered it. I had it an hour or less. I had a half an hour after it arrived in the showroom and so this is one of the first in Australia and so uh, other than the ones that the content creators already have, the marketers and what have you that have been showcasing. So I hope you like it. This is a Sony ZV E10. This is Dave Palmer. Okay, so this is nesting season in Queensland at the moment and uh, we have some very aggressive birds, magpies and um, uh, butcher birds we call them, they look similar, butcher birds are smaller than the magpie and uh, they, uh, they actually attack you, they, they don't tell you, they, they come up behind you uh, and they will go for, the, for your ear and they'll draw blood and uh, some people have been seriously injured from these things. So I'm going to film this, uh, I'll put the camera on my my mount here and I'll try to be careful going through keep my glasses on because so they don't injure my eyes but there's a very aggressive magpie just down here so I'll try and film it put my put myself in harm's way for my craft there you go aggressive and he hits hard uh, so I don't normally come this way because of this and uh, so uh, um, I just don't want to get knocked off my bike so I'll stay on the path in case I get shocked or I don't see him coming and he gets me. So look out for behind my head. Haven't seen him yet. Here we go. Here we go now. He's mine for the day. Here he is. There he is. He's going to come again. He'll come again. Here we go. You see him? He doesn't hit me yet. Here we go. He might have backed off. Here we go now. Okay. Is that all you're going to do today? Ah, chicken. Deliberately not looking around because they won't go for you if they Here see your eyes. Now. Oh, there he is. Here we go now. He's coming again. Here he comes. That hurts. Oh. Holy shit. Here we go now. That was worth filming. Ooh. He may have drawn blood, I'm not sure. Forty fella. I won't be coming here again during the nesting season, that's for sure.